In this lesson, I'm going to guide you through the book code given for this chapter seven on arrays. So what I've done is I've created uh, eight folders, uh, one for each lesson from the book, and I've kind of separated it that way so we can get a good understanding of what we're trying to achieve. And the idea uh, I know for, for me personally is to always go through the book code more than uh, more than even the text. I might, you know, read the text quickly, but I spend a lot of time with book code when I'm learning a new language, and I recommend you do the same. For example, right now I'm in soups1.php. This comes with the source code uh, of the book, um, again, chapter seven. All I've done is put them in folders so I can follow them in order, but this has a, an array called soups, and this soup um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, clam chowder, white chicken, chili, vegetarian. And if we um, print scalar soups, you'll see what happens. We can go to the, the, the browser here and click soups one, and all it does is print array, right? But if we print the contents of array, we need to do print R or a for each loop, which we'll get to. So um, immediately, if I'm a student in this class, one thing I might want to do is think, well, what happens if I had a comma here? Would it break it? Will it uh, cause it to have another element? And you can see it does absolutely nothing. So much like JavaScript, when you have an array, you can have another comma. And so, like, let's say, let's say we did this. Let's say we did Thursday, something like that, right? And then we just stopped it. Would that change the array? Would it give me an error? And I'm going to make sure that we're in the right area here. Because print our soups has changed, has it not? So I'm going to make sure I'm looking at the right, the absolute right file, because I should see a Thursday there or something. And so I'm going to, once again, drag 07 over the folder, go to this section, go to soups, and there's Thursday. And look, it didn't give me a fatal error, though. Isn't that odd? You would think that it would. So the idea is to, to play with these things and make sure that um, Thursday, let's do pizza. Everything's been reasonably healthy up to this point. So if you look here, it says vegetarian zero Thursday, and there's Thursday. Um, but I think if I clear the cache, now, if you remember from an earlier lesson, every time you want to clear the cache, just add a, a query string. And there's the end of our section. So Wednesday was vegetarian zero. So look at what happened here. We've got Wednesday vegetarian, right? And look at the new array right there. So we're printing R with this. <clears throat> We've got soups, which is an array. And then we have uh, Wednesday vegetarian. And the key is Thursday. But we haven't changed anything. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. We're going to go in and... Um, hit refresh and now we get pizza. So we've got uh, pairs of data all the way through. So it's interesting that we we kind of messed around there and didn't break anything. Um, so that's that's a simple uh, associative array because they're key value pairs. We outputted the the array itself and it didn't have um, the soups, but then we did print R and we got the contents of the array. So the next script that we're going to look at is going to utilize the count function and then how to use the key to output values and make assignments. So let's go ahead to the, the browser here. We'll go to folder number two and take a look at soups two. So we've got the same array that we had before and you can see the soups originally had count one, which equals the count of the soups um, elements. So if I'm you guys, um, when I and this is kind of how you can learn, what you could always try to do is try to take variables like this and ask yourself, what happens if I put a function in here? And watch what happens. We've got to make sure that we're looking at the right thing here. Um, but you can see that. And if you're wondering if the cache is working, what you can do is just put just put put a, a value. Hello. You know, like that. So now I know I've made a change. Now when I hit that, 
we should see those values, right? But we don't. So the next thing to do is to use our old trickery when we make a change. And now you see this. Look at that. Count array elements. So it treated it like a string. Okay. So there are a few ways around this. And this is why I really like the book code to go in depth on things. What you can do, okay, is to end the quote here, try it the dot syntax, and see if that works. Because syntactically, we're okay. So now when we do this, right, we have count array elements. We can add another whole different pairs of data up in the URL window. And that's one way to, and we can hit refresh again. And once again, the question arises, is that a cache issue? Why does it say hello? Well, I'm going to add my name. And when I do hello, Chris, if it shows, you see I'm hitting refresh again. And it's not showing. So the cache model on Chrome can be very, uh, very, very tricky. And you have to make sure that you save the file. So really what I should see here is hello, Chris, at some point, right? Now when we hit again, okay, here we go. Look at that. It worked. So you do you with your decisions on how to do this. Um, you see count soups. It's a small enough uh, line of code where it doesn't really matter to the outside person. They'll know what's going on. But in order to run functions and side strings, what you need to do is separate with dots and quotes. So this is the kind of playing around that I want you folks to do. We're in Chapter 7 now, and we're getting into really uh, in-depth parts of PHP. So it's a great idea to, to play. And the next thing we're doing is setting the index. So Thursday is chicken noodle, Friday is tomato, Saturday is cream of broccoli. Now we have six elements. And you can see count two, print R is six. So all we did was add three items to the array just by having a unique key. If we had had the same key here, like let's say we did Wednesday, um, and we did Wednesday chicken noodle, that would replace vegetarian. So again, hit, hit refresh and you see Wednesday has been replaced with uh, chicken noodle. So that is uh, script number two. We learned count and we're learning to manipulate arrays at this point. So the next thing we're going to do is bolt into folder three. And folder three is a little bit more formatted, a little bit better, uh, more readable for the user. And we have our our array here and one thing we haven't done um we did it in our in the lecture but we've talked about var dump and the difference between var dump and print r so if i do var dump soups and hit refresh hopefully well again we're gonna have to query string this and you see it still doesn't pop up so what i'm going to make sure that i do is positively sure that I save it and you can see still see that it's uh you can see it still doesn't show the var dump for soups which is a little bit silly to me but what I'm going to do is try something else now and I realize this is a a front end technique and what we're trying to do is just get the cache to be erased so I'm going to hold down on the the refresh button with and it still doesn't do it so um, the var dump is a pretty simple thing um, it really should output to the browser so let's see there we go it took a brand new URL to get that thing done so this is a six member array a re replacement of what happened in the last script but var dump is, is pretty neat and if you ever want like let's say you had a heavy 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 uh var dump a lot of a lot of values you can format it using html's preformat tags I do, I do this quite a lot when i'm um working with heavier amounts of code where i need to really kind of tone tone down the 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 formatting um here watch this that's it's not uh that's so odd so um when you do pre it's going to preformat it all the way down um but it doesn't seem to be working right now let's it could be because the array is not not big enough look at that it's not even there we go let me go back 
refresh. It should have the word, uh, there we go. Um, page isn't working, which is good. That's not a bad thing. Um, oh, yeah, I don't have a semicolon there. But that took a while to refresh that cache, didn't it? And this is what preformatting does. So that took a while to get it uh, where it could actually format. So the last thing I'll show you on this script is the for each loop. So we have for each soups as key value pair. And you can see the key, we've named it as day. So we have print day soup and then a carriage return. Um, really, carriage returns should be um, in... I'm going to comment this out, but they, they really sh it should be a break tag on each one. This is uh, P and P. That's what's causing the break. The carriage return is only working inside the source code. That's why the source code is like this. Without that, it would just have the P tags running together in one line. But that for each loop is going to be super handy, not only now, but when you get uh, into databasing. All right, let's go in and work with... Uh, the fourth script in our chapter seven book code. Um, let's go to four and we should start seeing um, some books. There we go. So the fourth script with books is we've got an indexed array with uh, one getting started with PHP variables and forms and using numbers. So we have uh, several arrays with um, indexes. So you've got this one and then advanced PHP technologies in the list of books with that. Then you got another one like this and you've got the multi-dimensional array, which is this. Um, so if you look, this is the same thing as you see PHP VQS. This is the same thing as if I took this and put it like that. It's the same thing. So what we're doing is figuring out how we're going to output it. So in this case, we can print the third chapter of my first book is the HTML forms in PHP. When we go back, we can see that it's uh, PHP, uh, the books, PHP VQS, and then the th number three. So we look for PHP VQS, and we've got one, two, and three right here. One, two, and three and then a fourth as well. So that's why that's there. We look at the first chapter, and we've got advanced BQP, um, which is uh, Scalar Books right here, advanced BQP, and then PHP ADV, and then I believe it's one, which means introduction to P or advanced PHP techniques. Here it is right here. So that's the next one. And yeah, there it is, advanced. And then the fourth chapter of the, this book is um, PHP MySQL, which is this variable. And then it's the numeral four, which is introduction to MySQL. And you see it on the right. Um, I, I do like breaking it down like that. It can be a little bit um, tough to follow. But just know that this is identical to, you know, putting this right here. And then taking the PHP ADV right here and pasting it right over here. And you can actually try this at home. And this is the third one, this one right here. So all we're doing is just being completely pure to the multi-dimensional array that's here. And this is where, you know, if I take, let's say I take uh, this, all right, we've just got the books and we don't need we can take it exactly like this and i'll comment this out and now we've got a multi-dimensional array without those variables it'll still be books vqs one two and three but like i said with a multi-dimensional array if i echo out the pre-format tags the way i did in the last um the last script like so echo closing tag pre like that and hopefully when I save it, it'll be formatted. And even though it's multidimensional, oh, look at that. It did, uh, oh, we didn't, we just echoed books. We didn't do the var dump. I'm sorry. When I record these, I'm sometimes thinking about my next move while I'm actually working here. So let's save it again. I want to make sure that I do the query string because that array now should, 
come on. I want to make sure. It's so weird that it's not refreshing. And it looks like there's a, in the console, there's some sort of error there. Ooh. So I paused the video for a little bit, just waited and hit refresh. And wouldn't you know it, the pre-formatted multi-dimensional array comes up perfectly. The reason I show you this is because if you have it in this format and someone asks you to, you know, print out, what's the first thing we printed out here? The the advanced database concepts. What you can do is find that book, go to PHP VQS, which is the key, right? And then go to number three, which is advanced database pod, which is right here. So that's how we can access things. And that's what I mean by, you know, practicing, doing trial and error, etc. Because arrays can get super multidimensional. I did one in for FedEx. I was doing a shipping module for an e-commerce site about, I don't know, 15 years ago, a long time ago. And I had to get a specific dimensional weight charge. And it was 17 levels down. And the only way I could do that was to pre-format the var dump so I could find it. And I basically did did this. I did a control F and tried to find the part of the uh, array that I needed. And it was like, you know, an indented all the way in. It was literally 17 layers down. Now, I think FedEx has converted to JavaScript object notation now. But the same rules apply when you have a very complicated data structure format it so you can see it and then you know try to find it and then find the level because this is set, this is three levels deep as you can see so let's move on to the next one that was i think that was a fun one i like multi-dimensional arrays they they're kind of fun to me let's go to five and we're going to go to the sort with this so sorts in php are a lot better than javascript when you sort an array, it will always work as expected, whereas in JavaScript, it's a little bit different. So um, when we look at this and we do the output, you'll see that the first for each loop simply goes in order of the loop. It goes Richard, Sherwood, Tony, Franz, Melissa, and Roddy. Then what we can do is array sort like this. So we're going to sort it. it. The R is actually for array reverse sort. Um, and you'll see now it has Tony, Richard, because it goes top to bottom. Now, if this were a database, we'd order by, you know, score descending or ascending. But with arrays themselves, we can do the key sort, the AR sort, or just a traditional sort. And so the K sort here is going to sort by key, meaning that it goes in alphabetical order for Franz, Melissa, Richard, Roddy, Sherwood, and Tony. So we've got array sort, k sort is an example here. And we use those specifically for um, uh, for associative arrays that have strings, basically. That's what the, the most common aspect of this is. Of course, the values here are actually numbers, but it still is an associative array because you have a, a string key. Um, so that is a, is a fun one. I'm going to end this video on part one here and then we'll do, do part two with where we go over the last three.